What's up, Coder Byte? Welcome back to another Data Structures and Algorithms video. I'm Elizabeth, and today we are going to be moving on to the new pattern, which is also involving two pointers, but this is going to be all about fast moving pointers and slow moving pointers, otherwise known as the tortoise and hare algorithm. Uh, this is going to be the first in um, a little three part mini series all about this pattern. Today we'll do an easy problem. Next week we'll do a medium problem. And then the last week we'll, you know, hit you with that hard problem. Um, I'm feeling a little hungover. I went out last night, hung out with my friend Ari. It's his birthday today. So happy birthday, Ari. Um, and let's see what else is new in my life. Uh, I got a new job and I'm super excited about that. And I'd love to do a little bit of a kind of walk through of what that interview process was like and how making these videos with you guys has really, really helped me get better at interviewing, which is an awesome, awesome thing. So that's kind of what's new with me. I hope everyone's well. Let's jump into the pattern. Okay, fast and slow pointers. What am I talking about? The, flash, the fast and slow pointer approach, aka the hare and tortoise algorithm, is a pointer algorithm that uses two pointers, which move through an array or a linked list or whatever, at two different speeds. This approach is especially useful when dealing with cyclic linked lists or arrays, so finding a cycle in a linked list or an array or whatever. And by moving at different speeds, the algorithm proves that the two pointers are bound to meet. The fast pointer should catch the slow pointer once the pointers are caught in that cyclic loop. So you can imagine two runners running in a track, right? So obviously a track is a cycle. Um, and to, the proof that there is a cycle in that track is that the fast runner will meet the slow runner at some point. It just has to happen. So that, and if they never meet, it's not a cycle. So that's kind of why you might use this sort of algorithm and this pattern particularly. So today we're going to do exactly what we just said. We're going to write a function to find a cycle if there is one in a linked list. So this week's problem. Given the head of a singly, singly linked list, write a function to determine if the linked list has a cycle in it or not. Now what's a singly linked list? It's kind of a funny word. Um, so a singly linked list, essentially just every node contains some data and a pointer to the next node, and it only allows traversal of the data in one direction. So every node only has a pointer to its next node. You can't ever go backwards. You are always going forwards in this kind of linked list. So let's look at an example here. So here's an example of a linked list. Each node has some data, numbers in this case. And the head is pointed here right at the, uh, the node that has the one in it. And one's next node is two, two's next node is three, three's next node is four, four next node is five, et cetera. And finally we get to six whose next node is three. And this is the cycle that we're looking for in this, our function has to determine, is there a cycle? This would be the cycle. So once the you know, two pointers get caught in this cycle, they are bound to meet. And that is what this pattern and this algorithm is based in, is if they meet, there is a cycle. So let's kind of talk through exactly the approach and how we're gonna do this with pointers and in code. So the first thing to kind of think about is how do we pick the speeds, right? So far I've only said like fast and slow. So what do I mean by that? So in this case, um, we can kind of just based on the problem, we can test out like what if we have one pointer that's moving, you know, through each node one at a time, and then one pointer, the fast pointer, which is moving two times that. So it's moving two nodes at a time. And why is that a good speed to pick? So let's take a look at that example again. All distances between the two pointers reduce to two possibilities. Either the fast pointer is one step behind the slow pointer, or the fast pointer is two steps behind the slow pointer. And again, this is if there's a cycle, because at first the pointers, the fast pointer will be ahead of the slow pointer. But as soon as the fast pointer gets caught in that cycle, it will somehow get behind that slow pointer once again. 
and all of the different possibilities. And, you know, again, use pen and paper, draw this out however you need to, but it reduces to these two kind of scenarios where either the fast pointer is one step behind or it's two steps behind. And that's the definition of one moving at one, one X speed and the fast pointer moving at two X speed, right? So here's just to remind everybody, the slow is moving one node at a time and the fast is moving two nodes at a time. So what does this mean in terms of finding that cycle? So there are two scenarios. If the fast pointer is one step behind the slow pointer, the fast pointer will move two steps, right? And the slow pointer will move one step and they'll, they'll meet, they'll converge. There's a cycle. The other possibility that we discussed is that the fast pointer is two steps behind the slow pointer. And in this case, the fast pointer moves two steps. The slow mo pointer moves one step. And after those moves, the fast pointer will be one step behind the slow pointer, which is the first scenario, right? So that means in the next iteration, they will meet because it ultimately will reduce back to that first scenario. So I don't know if this is confusing to talk about here before we code this out or before we kind of watch the algorithm play out, but I did wanna include this to kind of give you an idea of how did I come up with one moving at one X and one moving at two X speed? Um, so let's look at this algorithm kind of with some visualization. We'll see the pointers in action and hopefully that will kind of clarify, go back to this slide as you need to kind of really kind of let it sink in. How are you, how are you determining the speeds? So the hare and tortoise approach. Here's our linked list, same from the other two slides, it has a cycle, right? So we have a slow pointer, which is moving one node at a time and a fast pointer, which is moving two nodes at a time. So there they are, we've initialized them at the head and let's just watch what happens as they move through with these speeds. So the first iteration, the slow moves one, the fast moves two, the second iteration, same thing, the third iteration, Okay, so they're caught in the cycle now, right? And now the fast pointer is one behind the slow pointer. So that's that first scenario from the slide before. So in this next iteration, they're going to meet and that's when we can say, ding, 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 there's a cycle. So let's watch that. And there we have it. So that's kind of how this, it's, you know, this algorithm works. It's a pretty, it's very simple, you know, when it's um, kind of reduced to these sorts of like, when you, when you know, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think the key here is understanding why are we moving them at these different speeds and what are the different speeds and why? Um, and then, yeah, it's like I said, this is a very straightforward when, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's very basic and easy. Um, so let's code this out. Okay, so as per usual, I am in my Visual Studio Code editor, and I think the first thing we have to do is we have to make some, you know, representation of the nodes in our linked list. So I'm going to just start by defining a class called node. So this is just going to be a pretty simple uh, class here. And let's give it a constructor where we can pass in the value of the node and then um, an optional uh, next, which will be the pointer um, of the node's next um, node in the linked list. Um, and we'll initialize it at null um, by default. So let's say this dot value equals value and this dot next equals next. And I think that's it for this class. Um, very standard, very straightforward. Um, and then we can define our function. So let's say our function is going to be called has cycle. And we're going to pass in uh, the head of the linked list. Um, so there we have that. And then I guess let's just make some test cases. Uh, so let's construct some linked list using our node class. So from the slides, let's see, I'm going to do this backwards so that with each node that I initialize, I can initialize the next, the node that just comes before it, but it's next will be the node I just initialized. I think what I just said was very confusing. So just watch what I do here. Um, so let's say our test case one. So this is going to be const node six, 
is going to be our new node. And we're going to pass in some data. And then we're going to do 5. Node 5 equals a new node with a 5. And then I'm going to pass in the node I just created because node 5's next is going to be node 6. So I hope that's clear to everybody. Um, and then let's do node 4 this is going to be new node 4. We're going to pass in that its next is node 5. And then node 3 is going to be our new node 3 with node 4 as its next. And then node two is going to be new node two with node three as its next. And then finally, let's make our head. So this is going to be head one. And that is going to get a one. And its next is node two. OK, so now we have our linked list. Um, and what I've done here, there is no cycle yet, right? So to add a cycle, I want to now make node six its next be node three, I think. That's what it has in the slides. Um, so essentially here, we are going to add the cycle. And we're going to say that node six dot next is equal to node three. And that's going to be the actual cycle. Um, so yeah, I hope that's clear for everyone. Um, and then let's console log has cycle. And we're going to pass in that head one. And we're going to expect that that returns true because there is a cycle. And then I'm just going to make a few more test cases for us. Um, so let's say this is going, I'm going to copy this from something I prepared. So this is going to be our test case two, which is basically doing the same thing, but with letters. Um, it has a slightly different cycle. So we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we connect F back to node B. So that creates that cycle. And when we uh, call our function passing in head A, uh, we also expect that to return true because there is a cycle. And then finally, let's do one test case with no cycle. Um, so here's our test case three. So here are just a bunch of nodes with colors. Um, and there is no cycle here. Each one just has a next and it just continues until yellow, which doesn't have any next. Um, so when we pass in the head orange, which is the head of this, uh, this linked list, we're expecting that our function will return false. Okay, so that takes care of all of our test cases. Um, let's get into writing this, this function. So we want to initialize our um, our fast pointer and our slow pointer, right? So let's say let slow pointer equal head and fast pointer equal head because they both start out at the same place, um, which is a it's it's pointing to the head of the linked list. So that should take care of that. And, you know, this is a very, this is a simple code. There's not so much to this. Essentially, what we want to do is we want to move the pointers along at the speeds we've discussed and, you know, defined. Um, and we want to return false if the fast pointer reaches the end of the list and never met the first pointer. Um, and we want to return true if at any point they are pointing to the same place again. So. I'm just going to, I think, do a while loop here. And we're, we can say that while the fast pointer uh, is not equal to null, basically it never got to the end of the linked list because as we progress it forward, eventually it will get to a node that either is null or it gets to a node that has a next that's null. And that's essentially, you know, good enough, right? We've, uh, we've reached the end of the line. So while the fast pointer is not equal to null and the fast pointer dot next is not equal to null, right? So that's basically um, while the fast pointer is still in the linked list, right? What do we want to do? So here, what we want to do is we want to actually move the pointers forward. We can't check right away, are they equal? Because 
they are equal at first because we've said that they're equal. They're both pointed at the head. So the first thing we want to do is we want to say the fast pointer is going to be equal to the fast pointers next dot next. And the reason why we're making it go to the next next one, that's the 2x speed, right? The 1x speed would just be make it go point to the next node in the linked list, right? Which is exactly what we're going to do for the slow pointer. So let's say the slow pointer is now going to be equal to the slow pointer dot next. So this is, let's just write 2x speed, and this is 1x speed. Um, OK, so we have moved our pointers forward. So now we can check, finally, if the uh, slow pointer is equal to the fast pointer. We can return true. We know that there's a cycle. That's the definition of this algorithm. And again, imagine those racers on a track. If they meet, that's by definition proving that there was a cycle because the fast pointer ended up behind the slow pointer or the slow runner, whatever. Um, and I think if it reaches the end, we can just return false. And that might be the entire algorithm. Again, this is a very simple algorithm. It's, it's kind of like a, you know, if you just know this, then then it becomes very easy to 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 use. Um, but yeah, I think that it's it's relatively straightforward. Um, of course, I say that, and we haven't run it yet. So let's run it. Okay, so let's say node code. All right, so we got what we expected, right? So there's a cycle in the first one, true. There's a cycle in the second one, true, and there's no cycle in that last one. Um, so that's everything for the algorithm. Um, again, once, once you know, it's very, very, very straightforward. You just progress them each at the speed that makes sense for the algorithm. And um, you know, if the fast pointer reaches the end, we know that there's no cycle because there is no end if there's a cycle. That's the definition. Um, and yeah, all right, I have nothing else to say. It's a good one, a, a good, simple one. Um, hope everyone liked that. And that's a wrap, people. Uh, welcome to the tortoise and hare algorithm mini series. Please join us next week. We'll be doing a little bit of a harder problem and kind of diving a little deeper into this pattern, um, fast and slow moving pointers. I hope everyone is well. I hope, I don't know where everyone is, but at least where I live, um, it's, winter but it's mildly spring-like right now which is super nice so again reminder leave your computer sometimes go pursue some other passions um and yeah always come back though to watch our code to write videos um what else oh i uh am trying to do tiktoks on the code or bite tiktok so if people are interested go look at it uh, arguably it's harder than making these videos. So, you know, I'm going to do my best, but, um, it's been super fun and yeah. So catch me on TikTok, and I will see you all next week. Bye.